So my story is a survivor of domestic violence at the hands of a woman, something that's rare. And really, I've developed a tool that uses artificial intelligence to help bridge a gap. So when you are a domestic violence survivor, an advocate can only take you so far, and then you have an attorney that can pick you up at the other end. But the, the tricky thing is that to get to the attorney, you gotta have a lot of money, and most of us don't. So most of us are left in this gap that we can't jump. So that's where Domestic Violence Statute Matcher or statutematcher.org comes in play. It's a free website. It operates like a free attorney, but it's not an attorney. And you can input your situation. Real life stories to bring awareness to domestic violence, human trafficking, and systemic corruption. Welcome to our podcast and lives. We are so happy that you joined us and hope that you like and follow us and would love for you to share your thoughts in the comments below. Let the show begin. Hey, everybody. I have Raphael from the Domestic Violence Statute Maker, correct? Is that right? Statute Matcher, yeah. Matcher, yes, yes. Uh, really excited about this episode, y'all. They have the most amazing platform set up that can really make a difference in helping with domestic violence situations. Uh, if you are involved in a situation like that, then you know all too well just how difficult and and horrifying of a process that can be. And something like this has been very much needed for a very long time. So A plus to you. Love it. Love what you're doing and excited to hear more. So tell us a little bit about yourself and what brought you into this whole horrifying arena. Well, Danielle, thank you so much for bringing me on the podcast. And to start out, I'm not an attorney and this is not legal advice. So my story is a survivor of domestic violence at the hands of a woman, something that's rare. I've developed a tool that uses artificial intelligence to help bridge a gap. So when you are a domestic violence survivor, an advocate can only take you so far, and then you have an attorney that can pick you up at the other end. But the, the tricky thing is that to get to the attorney, you gotta have a lot of money, and most of us don't. So most of us are left in this gap that we can't jump. So that's where Domestic Violence Statute Matcher or statutematcher.org comes in play. It's a free website. It operates like a free attorney, but it's not an attorney. And you can input your situation in colloquial terms, anonymously, available 24-7, and it'll spit back out to you the corresponding legal statutes, which are your rights that correspond with the abuse you suffered. Now, you may be unfamiliar with the word statutes, and I mentioned it on purpose. Statutes are essentially your rights. Uh, the codes that correspond with the specific abuse that you suffered based on the jurisdiction where you live, the city, the town. And why are these codes so important, which are free, but never talked about? Because it can be a little complicated to match your situation to statute codes. You usually need to purchase the time of a criminal attorney that can be very expensive for them to listen to you and then they'll tell you what they think your statute codes are. Now, why are statute codes so important? Because whenever you report a crime to police, whenever you engage with detectives, judges, and law enforcement, you need to speak in a fact-oriented manner. And unfortunately, most of us, when we suffer the abuse, we're in a discombobulated state of mind. And I completely understand that I've been there. But these statute codes allow you to have a conversation that's fact-oriented. You can report the abuse, in a way that police can understand. And a lot of times you may actually have to educate the officers and the judges on what your rights are. And this artificial intelligence tool makes it super simple. Like in colloquial terms that anyone can understand, these are the codes that correspond, this is the evidence you need, and this is the time frame that you have to report it. Beyond that, it can extend beyond the criminal law, family law, custody law, immigration law, it can do all of them. So that's that what it does. That is spectacular. Yeah. I absolutely love it. And and it's so true. There are so many problems revolving around it to where it's next to impossible sometimes for a victim to get any kind of justice. And then once you enter the realm of family court, 
Lord have mercy. Like, I mean, you, it gets to the point where you feel like there's no hope and you have no idea what to do. And, you know, I mean, unfortunately, many times an attorney does not work for you. You know, it's, it's scary to take on such a big issue and to feel like you're tackling it alone because many times essentially you are. So I think this is hit the nail right on the head when you said that it fills in that gap. It really legitimately does. And not only can that help you with your informational purpose, but it can help make sure that you have the ability to hold accountability for what has happened to you. Because if you're letting these powers to be, no, you know, look, this is what happened to me. I know my rights. I know what rights were violated. And I expect these charges to be filed because this is what happened. And these are the laws that were broken. Precisely. That, that's very well said. I can tell you're very familiar with this, with the industry. And I mean, just you hit the nail on the head. Like you said, that you got to be your own best zealous advocate. At the end of the day, you may even have the money to have an attorney. You may have been assigned an attorney for free if you're lucky enough. But at the end of the day, they have a lot of cases that they're helping people with. You're not the only one. You know your situation better than anyone else, which makes you quali you're qualified already to chat with statutemaster.org. Just tell your situation anonymously and ask it for advice. What should I do? This is what the judge said. Should I mention this? Is this the right approach? Like you can have a conversation and brainstorm. It's fascinating how much it can help you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, do you have, uh, do you want to do a screen share so that we can kind of walk through uh, the website, give people an idea of what it looks like and what to expect and exactly how that works? Yeah, for sure. All right, let's see. So let me know when my screen is being shared. It's up there. Can everyone see it? I can, yes. All right, cool. So we want to go to statutematcher.org, link in the description, and you can start chatting. It's free. As you can see, there's no login required. It never asks you who you are. Right away, you can just start. So the main thing is to talk about the situation that happened to you. Uh, why don't you tell me like just a classic situation in maybe two or three sentences and I'll type it out here. My partner struck me in the face, would not let me leave my house. What else are common? There's so many common things and was very emotionally abusive. I guess that's probably a pretty good run of the mill covers several different situations. It's a little generic, but uh, the more specific, the better. So I got that taken care of. So it's got empathy. So I'm really sorry to hear what you're going through. Let's start by identifying the jurisdiction where the domestic violence occurred. So I can provide you with the most legal, relevant legal information. What country and state? Where are you located at right now? I'm in Ohio. Okay. Should we do Ohio for fun? We can, we can do Ohio. Ohio. All right, so I'll read it out loud for the people that are listening on audio only. So thank you for providing the jurisdiction. This is what the chatbot is saying. Let's gather more details to ensure we cover all aspects of the abuse and identify the relevant statutes. Can you describe the incident of abuse in more detail? Although you mentioned that your partner struck you in the face and would not let you leave your house and was emotionally abusive, please let me know if there are any additional details or other forms of abuse that occurred. The more information you provide, the better I can assist you. Here are some prompts to help gather more details. So this is basically the conversation that I had with a criminal attorney that I hired for just a few hours. It's all the money I had. I, I replicated this conversation with AI so people can that don't have the money can have that conversation. So what happens is a lot of times abusers, they abuse in more than one way. So this is your chance to really flush it out. What is it that happens? So physical assault. Can you describe any other physical acts of, uh, acts of violence against you? So let's talk about that. Like one, physical assault. Uh, is there anything else or should we leave it at that? I didn't give like my personal story. I was just trying to think of things that are very common that a lot of people have problems with. So why don't we go with it hit me in the face and kicked me previous issues of stalking. So let's talk about stalking. So I put point two. You don't have to be as organized as me, but to stalking. Usually they're stalkers like the one Absolutely. that crossed my path. She's a stalker. So how let's go stalking like he's talking to my friends on social media and saying things about me how about that perfect saying horrible things about me uh, i'll do one here 
he shared a picture of me naked with a friend. I'm horrified. Invasion of privacy is usually a big time. Why don't we put in there? He confiscates my phone as well. And and won't let me use it. Yeah. To call okay. for help. Let's add in specifically to call for help. Because I know that's a big problem too. Most abusers won't allow you to have access to any kind of help, which is a huge violation of law, which is very rarely enforced. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. All right. So harassment. Have you received unwanted and persistent attention? Can you give me an example of that? Hypothetical. Right. Let's go with he shows up at my work accusing me of cheating. Okay. Invasion of privacy. Has your partner access your personal information or spaces without your consent? Um, I think that kind of goes along with the phone. Okay. We can skip that one. And these, the ones that don't apply, we can skip. And by anyone watching, you can skip all this and just say, that's it. But I'm just going to go more in thorough detail, right? Emotional, physical abuse. Can you provide more details about behaviors causing emotional distress? Um, we can skip that one. Let's talk about economic abuse. Let's say yeah. he took me out of all bank accounts, right? And I don't have access to matrimonial funds. Sexual abuse, digital abuse. That's it for now. I think that's good. So more detail. This is just amazing. Like watching this work in real time is just so spectacular. Yeah, the first time I saw this after I programmed it, it was like two in the morning and I got up and I was like, Rocky from the movie, I was like, yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> I bet, I bet. Such an amazing and huge accomplishment that it can save lives. All right, so let's see what it said. Thank you for providing more details. Based on what you shared, let's identify the relevant statutes in Ohio that apply to your situation. Physical assault, Ohio Revised Code. So these are the codes that you can report to police and you know your rights now. You're becoming an informed citizen. Description, this statute covers knowingly causing or attempting to cause physical harm to another person. It talks to you about the evidence needed, medical records, photographs, injuries, witness statements, and any other documentation of a physical assault. The videos are very helpful for that. Statute limitations. The time frame you have to report the crime to police since the date of the alleged offense is two years for misdemeanors and six years for felonies. So um, it depends. We can click on this link. Sometimes the link doesn't work, but I specify in the chat. But you can always Google the code, and that's the way to work around that. So it's no biggie. You can just go like this. Copy this. I'm still screenshotting, right? Yes. Okay. Boom, you paste it there and it takes you to the code. And you can go through this code now, like a multiple choice. Like, do I satisfy A, knowingly cause, attempt to cause physical harm to another person? Okay, great, that's satisfied. B, shall recklessly cause serious physical harm? Satisfied, great. Moving on to the next one. C, violation section is guilty of assault. So it talks about all the requirements that need to be true in order for this statute to be upheld to the fullest thing to the law. Moving on to the next one. So statute limitations, I wanna talk about that. You may go to police and they may tell you that, in my case, they told me that I waited too long. I had waited two weeks, that's it, to report it because I wanted to make sure I was safe. And I had to pull up the statute limitations is the time you have to report. And I said, officer, in the state of Arizona, I actually have seven years to report a felony and I'm actually early. And he knew that I knew my rights. And when people know that you know your rights, they treat you differently. So um, what are your thoughts on that? Absolutely. And it's, you know, it's a shame that as a citizen, we are the ones that are supposed to keep up with the laws when there are people where, you know, that's their job. But it's very true. It's, it's a very well-known complication where officers and judges, they don't always do their job. So I think this is the perfect way to have what you need going into the situation to, again, to make sure that there is proper accountability. I mean, not just for the perpetrator to be held accountable, but for our system to do their job properly as well. Exactly. Well said. So in a Word document, let's see, I'm going to show you how I submitted the report to police. Well, basically, let's talk about this one. Dissemination of private sexual images. Well, okay, I'm going to highlight that. Okay, we'll talk about this one. Theft. We look up that code on Google. I grab the entire code description. I paste it on a Word document. Now, this is extra. If you want to be like super meticulous about it, like I am, you paste it in a Word document. 
and then you go one line at a time and underneath you start putting in like a different color what evidence you have to satisfy this statute requirement so um, i'll give consent beyond the scope by deception by threat by intimidation so right there by intimidation i can say he told me and i have an mp3 recording on my phone that i don't have access to marital bank accounts attached you can see my screen right and we're done yes yes so then you can fill this out and then send it to police now keep in mind that anything you say can and will be used against you so review that thoroughly and there are risks involved so you can actually a lot of people may use this pretending like they're victims like my abuser pretending like she was the victim and it didn't work out well for her but um don't don't try to do that because if you lie to police that's actually um a statute violation too so just yeah. be careful what you put on here not self-incriminate yourself if you're the abuser then leave it alone all right so basically you go one at a time and then just start saying the evidence you have to satisfy the requirements and then you send it to police and next thing you know you gotta be treated with the utmost respect they're gonna be looking at your case very thoroughly and things are gonna work out in your favor um if you have the satisfying statute requirements uh and the evidence absolutely this is just, i can't say enough about this and i really hope that this turns out to be something massive that is really long lasting that the people take advantage of and and actually use because this is it's such a huge problem and it's not just nationwide it's worldwide but i mean here in the united states it's every state you go to this is an issue it's a problem and it's quite often swept under the rug and ignored and it's our responsibility as society to hold accountability and to create that change that we so desperately need very well spoken i agreed and let's talk about some of the capabilities beyond finding statutes because that's just the beginning and i think that's what should be the conversation should be focused around that but it's also proficient in orders of protection criminal law family law divorce law child custody cases child abuse immigration law cyber stalking and more so unfortunately uh, sometimes children are caught in the middle of this so i can say we have children and are going to divorce I can't afford an attorney. What should I do? Now, by the way, this is not legal advice. So um, it's always up to you. You should always consult with an attorney in your state, but it's good to be informed. Absolutely. It gets those ideas going and keeps you informed. So what did it say? Let's see. I'm sorry to hear about your situation. Here are some steps you can take if you can't afford an attorney and are going through a divorce with children involved. Steps to take seek legal aid services many states including ohio have legal aid organizations that provide free or low cost legal assistance to individuals who cannot afford an attorney you can contact these organizations like bam hyperlink hyperlink for assistance all right good you got a couple of resources contact local bar association that's another place you can go to utilize court resources self-help centers um, so you can actually ask you like where are the help centers in ohio and it'll and it'll tell you mediation services online legal resources it gives you this is actually pretty cool document everything that's going to give you a lot of leverage file temporary orders all these different links you can go to like this information is real powerful and it, like going back to the first thing i said on the podcast it can really bridge that gap if you can't afford that attorney and the legal advocate can only take you so far it's pretty cool when you can come here so yeah i guess you can just start asking about the resources what do i do how do i file this what about like how do i file an order of protection in ohio have you done one of those before oh yes <laughs> yes I've, I've had a couple approved not that it really did any good but you know it's always good to have at least you have that documentation and you're showing that record trail great so this is what you can do uh, determine the type of order of protection and i wasn't even aware of this one mm. Okay. Necessary forms takes you to the forms, the hyperlinks fill out. You know, that's just amazing. Just that alone. I know that one problem that I did run into here in Ohio, and it, it really just blew my mind. To be honest, I contacted a domestic violence agency and went through my situation. I was horrified. There were, you know, threats of unaliving and 
kidnapping and all sorts of just crazy, horrifying things. And I called an advocate through a shelter and there they couldn't even tell me what forms I needed to be able to file for a protection order. They said that that would be giving legal advice and they can't do that. And it's like, there's something seriously wrong with our nation when we have advocates to help people through some of the most horrifying events in their lives. And they can't even tell them what form they need because there's two different protection order types here in Ohio anyways. And it's like, wow. (laughs) Yeah, I've been in that situation. It's like you can't even have a conversation because they're petrified of giving you legal advice. But I'm like, you're not telling me what to do. Like, I just need to know what are my resources. And I think there's something fundamentally wrong. I'm a big believer. The Bible says, iron sharpens iron. Like we need to hold each other to a higher standard. And I think the advocate training can be so much better than it currently is. It is a position with high turnover. So there are a lot of good advocates that are very competent and want to help. But given that there's so much turnover, they may just put someone in the front lines that may have not been fully trained. And the training itself can be a lot better and thorough. So when it comes to legal advice, you can say, these are your potential, keyword potential, legal statutes. I cannot tell you which ones apply and which ones don't to your situation. But just so you know, you can go to the website statutematter.org and it has been proven to be very helpful for a lot of people. And if you decide, you can chat with it and see what comes out. Now that takes that, is that that disclaimer that doesn't get you in trouble as an advocate if you say that over the phone. And you can give the resource to the victim so they can use it on their own time like we're doing right now. It's a moment of high stress when this happens to you. So you gotta have someone to walk you through. And telling someone that we don't give legal advice and just giving them like one or two phone numbers they can call like a legal aid clinic, which they're overwhelmed with calls. It just leaves people without getting any help at all. So I think that this right here bridges that gap. It it does. You did a phenomenal job. This it it blew my mind when I first came across that I saw one of your uh, TikTok videos and I was instantly like, what? No way. Is this real? And I looked into it and I was just, wow, it's so desperately needed in our world today. And it's a shame that something like this is is so desperately needed. But, you know, and we can't change what we can't acknowledge and we can't move forward and we can't effectively help people if we don't have the proper resources at hand to be able to do so. Yeah. So let's check this out. So one of the ways that I use it is I'll select something that is said in the chat. And by by the way, this can be used in mobile, but I'm using my desktop. So I'll paste this part about a hearing and I'll say something like my ex is contesting the order of protection and there is a scheduled hearing. I'm apprehensive about attending. What should I know? before going and how can I prepare myself? So the AI is typing right now for everyone listening that can see him. That so, is so true. Tell us, let's see. Look, it's got the empathy uh, that I baked into the code. I understand that attending a hearing can be stressful, especially in situations involving DV. Here are some steps to help you prepare for the hearing and what you should know before going. Prepare for the hearing, gather evidence, Documentation. Collect any evidence that supports your case. Medical records, police reports, photographs, text messages, emails, witnesses. Organize your evidence. Prepare your testimony. Write down the key points. Understand the legal standards. And you can actually ask it, like, what are the legal standards? Like, as a follow-up question, right? Courtroom etiquette. Stay calm and composed. Present your case. Respond to questions. So, very resourceful. You can go into, like, if you're in the middle of a divorce, you can come here, too and get some advice. Even if you have an attorney, it's good to consult with multiple sources, get multiple opinions, right? And yeah, go ahead. If there's any comments, I have something else to say at the end. Yeah, I think that's just spectacular. Uh, the, The way that it lays it all out, I know that representing yourself pro se has been quite popular over the last several years. It's been a necessity sometimes because there's just so many attorneys that, you know, like I said before, they just really don't fight for you properly. So if you find that you are having a hard time getting proper representation, I mean, you don't you don't get do overs and things like this. So if you don't feel like you're getting proper representation, it is imperative that as soon as you recognize that you have to switch 
gears and take a different path. And this is the perfect way to get that going. So that way, you know what you're doing and you know a bit more what to expect. And if you do have to go into it without an attorney, then this way you can be so much better prepared for conquering that. Well said. Yeah. So it gives you the links to the forms you need to fill out and I can do an input that's really basic. I want to get divorced now. What is step number one? Make it simple, please. Like, let's just cut through the clutter. Like, what's step number right. one? Obtain the forms. Here we go. It types too fast. I got to scroll up. All right. So it gives you the link where you get the form, fill out the form. If things were only so simple, right? Sometimes you need to yes. code an attorney, they make it so complicated and so expensive. It doesn't have to be that way. Well, I found it seems like the system is intentionally set up that way sometimes though too, unfortunately. Well, let's talk about that. Let's say I actually already have an attorney or let's call a divorce attorney. And I think that they're not really uh, on top of my case and um, I want to double check their work. That's very vague. Let's see what it comes out with. And I think it's also important to point out that in many cases, things can be handled illegally by those involved, like the judge or CPS, uh, other attorneys, officers, laws are broken on their behalf on a regular basis. So I assume that you could also then put in here, how do I hold them accountable, filing complaints and such as well, because it's really important as society, if there's somebody in your case that's doing something illegal, if you don't hold them accountable, nobody else will. And you know, with your in particular case anyways. So it's really important that that we start coming together and making our voices heard. If somebody is doing something that they're not supposed to do from a legal standpoint, file a complaint. Those systems are put there for a reason because it does happen. And it's imperative that we start making it known and getting that on record. So that way, hopefully, you know, after they do it so many times, they won't be able to do that, hopefully, anymore if they're properly held accountable. Well said, well said. And for, for a side note, I have the utmost respect for our law enforcement, our judges. I think for the most part, they're all very good and honorable people. But like in any profession, there are some individuals that unfortunately are not meeting the standard. And what do we do when we find that situation? Because unfortunately, I found myself in that situation with, and I never thought this was going to happen to me, with law enforcement that they were not honoring my rights, my statutes. They were unfamiliar with the codes. They did not want to collect my evidence. They wanted to just like brush this case under the rug and move on to the next. And I was not going to let that happen. So especially when I found out that my ex had a record of abusing other men before me when I pulled up her police records in her hometown. So like you said, we need to put a stop to this. <clears throat> and it takes courageous individuals to file that complaint, escalate it up the chain. So let's say that we want to file a complaint against the judge, something rare that may not happen often. So how do I file a complaint against the judge if the judge, what's the thing that the judge did wrong? Well, what's a good rights violation that they do a lot? Maybe failure to consider important evidence. Very nice. Okay, that's what it said. Filing a complaint against a judge is a serious matter and should be done with careful consideration. Here's how we can file a complaint if you believe the judge failed to consider important evidence in your case. By all means, we're not encouraging people to file complaints for no reason. We're not giving you advice. We're experimenting and see what are some of your options, okay? So, steps to file a complaint against a judge in Ohio. Document your concerns. Review the judicial conduct rules. And it even gives you the Ohio Code of Judicial Conduct. This is powerful information. Prepare your complaint. Okay. Specifics. Submit the complaint. And it tells you where to submit the complaint. The phone number. It gives you, tells you to follow up. Oh my goodness. Even the Ohio Office of Disciplinary Counsel. Judicial conduct. Well, I think that can be very useful. What do you think about that response? Absolutely. That was quite thorough. That came back with a lot more information than what I anticipated. So let me teach you about how I think. Um, this is like, I like to get into the specifics. Like, how do I make my complaint a valid? one. What is the committee looking for? Right? So for everyone that's very nice watching a type and the things that it says are specific allegations, relevant evidence, 
What's an example of relevant evidence? The medical records I submitted showed the extent of my injuries from the abuse, which directly impacted the custody decision. Okay. Documentation impact on your case. I really love that it has examples as well to kind of get you in that mindset to you know show you a bit more specifically what exactly they mean yeah this is like you can almost copy and paste this the judge's refusal to consider my medical records resulted in an unfavorable custody decision which jeopardizes my children's safety that's very well written that's absolutely <laughs> yeah very professional and to the point yeah you don't have to do this alone people like those days are behind us now so adhere to judicial conduct rules clarity and specificity evidence of conduct and some links and it goes on and on like you can talk about any of the laws here and more and tell your situation so i hope that this is helpful at the next phase we're looking for funding now we're a nonprofit, and i would love to do this full time help people make videos uh keep programming and the way to do that is if you if you made it this far in the in the podcast we're very grateful we hope that this can help you in your situation we are looking for videos like a little selfie video just 60 seconds or less you can post on social and tag us and then tag Tag an organization that you think should be using Statue Matcher to help their, their victims. And we want to collect like a hundred of those videos and submit applications to receive funding uh, because we always want to keep this free. When I suffered the abuse, I promised to God, this is not my idea. God gave me this idea. I cannot take credit for this. I'm not that smart. So we need to compile a list of different videos from victims all over the world saying how Statue Matcher helped them. Just 60 seconds, that's all we ask. Who you are, or you can keep that anonymous, how Statue Matcher helped you and an organization you think should be using and that's it and send it over to us that is a spectacular idea and i'm actually going to take that a step further and for all of you survivors out there who have encountered this horrifying reality uh, maybe it's a, a an idea to personally reach out to different advocates and organizations in your area and ask them if they've heard about this and maybe inform them about this to kind of help get that word around a little bit faster and more effective that's that's a good idea I, I can't do it alone uh i got my mom helping me she's a secondary victim of what happened to me my mom is my best friend and there's a lot of mothers out there that have sons that are straight men like me and may encounter a female predator in their future so domestic violence is not ge it's gender neutral and what happened to me can happen to your sons your children and i really need your support i just want to make myself useful in the world and help humanity and i think that i found something that has been helping people it is amazing i'm very impressed this is a game changer to be honest i mean it's there's not really much else that can be said about it than that it changes the way that victims are going to be able to get the help that they need that up until now having something like this it was just unheard of and it's a game changer for sure a plus plus i love it well thank you so much yeah you can find us at statutematcher.org link in the description and if in, there's anything that you don't understand send me an email send me a message i check all the social medias almost on a daily basis and we can do a free webinar like i'll just hop on the call like you right now and i'll walk you through if there's anything that's not clear and for organizations that want to start using us you don't need our permission you're free to go and get in and run with it here we have a couple examples like catholic charities in arizona their dv advocates are already using it be a butterfly another nonprofit, they're already using it on broken horizons or victims themselves they just hopped on it and started being their own best sellers advocates that is spectacular i will put all of the descriptions for the social media and different ways that you can reach out and get a hold of rafael as well if you need some help navigating all of this and uh, getting the help that you need to stay safe you deserve to feel safe and victims of violence deserve justice if the powers that be aren't willingly helping you with that, then this is the perfect way to make sure that you get the justice and the help that you need. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for having me in the podcast. And what's something that we can do for you? How can we help you? Um, we'll just work on working together and 
and creating awareness. That's the biggest thing that we can do. You know, we got to bring people together and, and, and we have to stop worrying so much about who the victims are and the details surrounding. It's really heartbreaking to see how against each other male and female victims tend to be. There's just so much when it comes to, you know, females get so irritated because they are the ones that are most at risk, which is true, but that does not negate the fact that there are male victims who desperately need and deserve to be recognized for the trauma that they've endured and to get the help and the support that they need. And for any victim to be against each other like that is it's unnecessary and it's ridiculous. We're all victims the same and we have to unite and come together or we're never going to be able to create that change that we so desperately need. I've seen what you're talking about on social media and I think we need to zoom out, like take a step back and see that we're all in this together, male, females, gender neutral. And I've been very fortunate. Both my mother and my father have always been there for me and they love me unconditionally. I have no complaints about my parents. So I love my mom and my father. The women that have suffered this, you also have male children that could be like me one day. And remember that when when you think that all men are the the enemy. We're, we're not. I really want to help. In fact, I think that women that are abusive, that then pretend to be victims, they're the number one enemy of women because they erode the credibility of other women who actually did suffer domestic yes. violence. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So very true. And, you know, it it makes it that much more difficult for the female victims who really are victimized to get help. So they're giving us all a bad name. We are definitely focusing our energy in the wrong places sometimes. And it's imperative that we come together. We're stronger together, period. And that's all there is to it. So we've got to get rid of all of this blah, 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 crap, and just come <laughs> together. <laughs> yeah, know your rights. Uh, I don't want people to end up in the comment section complaining about their ex and how everything is so unjust. I can help you get justice if you simply talk to an AI bot like the one I built in StatuteMatcher.org, tell your situation, know what your rights are, and see what strategies you can implement. But I also always keep in the back of my mind, just because somebody claims that they're a victim, it doesn't actually mean that they're a victim because my ex was very convincing at crying in front of people. But when I had all my recordings, people actually saw the real truth. So I always keep that in mind when someone says that they're a victim i'll wait to see what the evidence is yeah i'll take it at yes, that absolutely for sure i am just so grateful that i came across your content on tiktok and so happy that we've connected so i look forward to moving forward and seeing what we can do to help each other grow to, to bring the proper awareness and create that change that we so desperately need awesome well thank you so much for having me on podcast. Yes. Thank you for joining me. It was an absolute pleasure. Come back anytime. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a great day. All right. So quick question. Yeah. No, that was fantastic. You're a great podcast host. Like you've been doing this for a while, huh? I'm new. Actually, I huh? just started Humanity Against Violence uh, a few months ago, and I just started doing podcasting. I've always been a social butterfly with the exception of the extreme PTSD that keeps me hiding in my house a lot now. But uh, one step at a time, I'm overcoming that and bringing myself back out of my shell. And this has definitely helped a lot with that that's so cool well if there's anything i can do to help support you let me know i think you're very strong and i'm just so happy that you're you're putting a platform out there for people to connect and you're putting your grain of sand in the in the right pile like you're helping us build i like that absolutely absolutely my goal is to uh try to get all of these different organizations so i've noticed you know there's so many people that they're desperate to create change they're desperate to get their story out there and and to you know do something better with what they've experienced but you know it's it's so scattered and you know you got this group over here and this group over there and they want to do this but they can't get the recognition and you know if we have some place where we can bring everybody together and start doing things as a whole like doing rallies on a mass 
scale across the United States, starting petitions on a mass scale across the United States, that will create change. I think it's really important that we find a way to create that platform that brings everybody together. So hopefully it works. It's a uh, it's new and it's growing quickly. It's it started growing a lot more quickly than what I anticipated. And I haven't even really had a whole lot of time to even do things properly the way that I want. Because I'm, you know, like you said, I'm just one person and, you know, I'm a single mom and I do have a day job too, you know, so. What do you do for a living? I build websites. I'm, I'm um, just a nerd all the way around. <laughs> right on, right on. So, you know, programming? Yeah. That's cool. Good for you. It's been exciting. Ever since COVID, my business just never really bounced back to the way it was before. And then right in the middle of the COVID pandemic, I had brain surgery. Oh. Uh, my ex used to strangle me all the time. So I have a massive brain aneurysm that I didn't even know I had. And it should have killed me. Um, most aneurysms are about two to three millimeters and minus 10. So uh, it started leaking. I started having uh, really weird visual disturbances. And uh, I went in and they told me I had a brain aneurysm and it was leaking, which that alone in itself is a miracle. And most brain aneurysms don't leak. They rupture and you die. So, so that alone was a miracle. And then it did rupture during my brain procedure and they had to sacrifice an artery in my brain to save my life. And they can't explain how how I am not paralyzed and how I'm not blind. So it's, uh, I can explain it. <laughs> God had bigger plans, you know? Yeah, I was just going to so, say that. For I sure. Was say that. So we we've got lots of work to do. I can't disappoint him. I want to, um, are we still recording or no? Yeah, but like okay, I let's keep, it. Let's keep it going. I wanted to say that like God is something that we don't talk about in domestic violence. Like we shy, we shy away from that subject. We talk about everything, but we don't talk about God. For some reason, it's just not allowed. But I, I challenge that. And I've had quite success in the sense of when I tell my story, I tell them like, gee, I don't want to cry in this pocket. But it's like when I was at my lowest moment, I picked up a Bible and it saved my life. I flipped to the back. They're called the Proverbs. And there's these like little quotes that they're about wisdom in life and how to live a good life and how to look out for the wicked. It talks about in the Bible, like what the wicked characteristics are like. If you try to correct the wicked, they'll scold you and they'll like get like really aggressive. But if you correct the wise, they'll be grateful. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is like her and her family, like exactly describing them. And I wish I would have seen that before because it helps you dodge the wrong people. But it also gives you a, a feeling of peace and you feel like you're accompanied, that people have suffered what you've been through because there's stories in the Bible about great suffering. And it's the one thing that would put me to sleep like a baby after suffering all this. And I started telling people like, this is my story. And I, I have a Bible. Do you want one? And people were like, yeah, send it over. So part of what we do is we send out Bibles. It's not our primary thing. And we don't leave with that like side thing. And if you want one, we'll send you a Bible with your name engraved in it. And it's free. I I should go to a website, you type in, you click on the Bible button and we'll send you a free Bible. And you won't believe how life changing it's been for some of the victims. They were like, why has no one ever talked to me about the Bible and God when I go to a DV conference? I'm suffering so much pain. All they want to do is they want to medicate me. And that's it. Like, what else? And I provided that one thing that no one else was talking about. So I encourage to open up the conversation. Let's talk about God. Let's talk about the Bible. And I understand that as a nonprofit, I don't leave with that. It's on the side. Only upon request, I send them. But uh, let us not be afraid of talking about God and the Bible. Absolutely. Amen. And, you know, the, the amount of strength and inspiration and love and hope that the Word of God can bring is just overwhelming you know it's it's very powerful and it can really make a huge difference not only in the way that you feel about yourself with your own healing journey that is inevitable when you go through something like this but the way that you connect and interact with society and the recognition of of like you said you know different evil tendencies and qualities and and things of that nature a lot of victims, you know, once you once you're victimized, it's hard to pull yourself out of that. And a lot of victims have a tendency of repeating that and finding themselves in another situation equally or, or worse than what they were in before. I myself mm -hmm. fell victim to that trap. I was sexually abused as a 
young child and you know you have that you know that victimization it just it, that cycle continues until you open your eyes to what's really happening and why do you have those tendencies to be drawn to those people it's all psychology and it's very real and there are answers there are explanations and there are ways that you can help yourself mm-hmm. walking a closer path with Jesus changed my life hands down without question and some of the biggest ways I never could have even imagined. Yeah, yeah, those uh, the words touched my heart. Well, let's create change together and kick some butt and bring it all back to God. I got one more thing that I want to share, introduce the audience to. If you may have not heard, there's this thing called Stoicism, which is a philosophy that I subscribe to. I really enjoy it. And essentially, it's about not letting our external circumstances affect our inner peace. And one of the Stoics, the great Stoics, was Marcus Aurelius. He was the emperor of Rome, um, the biggest, basically, civilization. And he wrote this book called Meditations. And he's got like so many good quotes, like, you could be uh, good today, but instead you choose tomorrow. So a lot of the victims that are suffering, waiting for tomorrow to be the day that they get their life back on track. Remember that one. You could be good today, but instead you choose tomorrow. Another one is he shares about that the wicked have always been around. The, the people that you and I have encountered, they've been around before, they'll be around after, and they're not going to go away. So by us expecting that they're not going to be wicked people in society, it's an irrational ask. And chances are, most people are good. We just happen to run a couple of bad ones. So it's okay, the way that I look at it, to trust again, and implement some new filters and not let people in so quickly. But it's okay to come back to society and have an Another girlfriend and try to get married and have children. So I think stoicism is something that we should look into. I just want to introduce listeners. Stoicism, Marcus Aurelius, and the book is Meditations. You want to check that out. For sure. I'll include some links in the description below too. I'll, I'll do my own research and, and put some links in down there. <laughs> right on, right on. So. That's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah, we certainly appreciate that. And uh, we'll touch base then. Until awesome. then, consider me a friend. I'm just a message yeah. away. And uh, you're a very strong person. So thank you for today's right opportunity. Right back at you. Thank you. Have a beautiful, blessed day. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.